Friday morning story time. I have three stories for you today. We are going to be doing three stories today. Um, they're all ebooks that I borrowed from the library. So the first one today is going to be Virgil and Owen. This one is written by Paulette Borgen. I found a polar bear, Mom, said Virgil, and I'm keeping him. You are a polar bear, said Virgil. Come with me. Look, Virgil showed her how to hop on the ask berg. berg. The polar bear splashed and splashed in the turns. Everyone laughed. Virgil did not laugh. You are my polar bear, said Virgil. Come with me. The polar bear slipped and slid with the seals. Everyone had fun. Virgil did not. You are my polar bear, said Virgil. Come with me. The polar bear twirled and whirled with the penguins. Everyone had a wonderful time. Virgil did not have a wonderful time. Stop it, said Virgil. You are my polar bear. Come with me. Are you getting the impression that Virgil might be a little jealous that the polar bear is having fun with his other friends? Hmm. No, said the polar bear. My name is Owen. Virgil stomped away. He kicked the snow. He jumped up and down. Come play with us, Owen said. Really, said Virgil. Everyone drifted, dipped and dived and splashed and swam and played together. Until... Listen to me, Owen, said Virgil. You are not my polar bear. You are my friend. Everyone cheered. We're all friends. So, did Virgil learn an important lesson about making friends? I think so. All right. Ready for our next story? Let's go back here to the library, and we are going to grab three daisies. Three daisies. This book is by Jan Brett. Now, remember, with Jan Brett stories, you have to look carefully at the illustrations because not only is there illustrations here, but on the sides of her books, sometimes there's parts of the story, too. Here we go. Hot, hot, hot. Three little Dazzies were almost grown up, and it was time for them to find their own place. Mommy, Peavy, and Timby waved goodbye to mommy, daddy, auntie's uncles, and all their cousins and set out for the distant mountain. Come and visit us, they shouted. A place cooler, a place less crowded, and a safe place from big eagles. The sisters traveled all day and all night across the Numbai Desert arriving at the foot of the mountain the next morning. This is where we will live, they agreed excitedly. Welcome, said a squeaky voice out from the scree. It came from a handsome, smiling Magar man. What? No one has lived here for a long time, just me and the eagles up the mountain. Eagles? The little Dazzies shivered in the hot, hot sun. Where could they build their houses? Mimby eyed long grasses. Those grasses will make a lovely, cool house, she said. And she set to work, cutting and twisting and braiding and bundling. She finished in no time. Be near and dear sister, she said, crawling inside for a nap. Pimby spotted pieces of driftwood. 
silver from the sun, lying in the sand of the dry riverbed. There we'll make a fine wooden house, she said, and she set about collecting as many pieces as she could find. But when she finished, she hung up a hammock and called out, Be near and dear sisters while I rest my eyes. See how there's animals here on the side of the picture? There's an eagle right there, and it sort of looks like a hedgehog right there. Timby looked at the rocks around the mountains. I will make a stone house, she said, but it won't be as easy to build as the one made of grasses or sticks. And it wasn't. She had to work all day in the hot, hot sun to get it finished in time to sleep in at night. The agar man had been watching them. He was happy they were staying on. He missed the company. So here we have Timby working. We have the agar man, agamar man, and over here we have an eagle. I wonder what will happen. The three little dazzies slept late into the morning. As the sun rose higher and higher in the sky, the big old eagle who lived up the mountain stretched his wings and had flown down to look for a meal for his hungry chip. Mimby woke up hungry and went outside. Suddenly, a long-winged shadow passed over her. Eat the eagle, she cried, and she hurried back into her grass home. See, over here's the eagle. And there's the Yagar man watching. I see you, Dazzy, the eagle screeched and swooped down. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in. He squawked, beating the air with his wings until the grass roof sailed off. The eagle grabbed Mimby and lifted her up, up into his nest. <gasps> oh, no. But the eagle was greedy. No sooner had he dropped Mimby into the nest than he spotted Pimby in front of her stick house far below. Two dazzies would be double delicious, he thought, and he went feathers flying. Timby looked up and saw him coming and turned and ran back inside. See, here's Mimby in with the eaglets, and here's the Aganar man watching what's happening. I wonder if he's climbing to help. The eagle landed and screeched. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked. Twigs flew, sticks rattled until Pimby's stick house fell apart. Then, just like Mimby, she felt herself being lifted high in the sky and plunked down into the eagle's nest. Here, he's dropping her off. Timby looked out to call her sisters to come for breakfast for tasty seed porridge, but instead of a grass hat and stick house, she saw the long shadow streaking across the rocks. I see you, Daisy, and here I come. Look up in the nest. Mimby and Pimby are huddling together, hoping somebody will save them. The eagle landed and shrieked, I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in. And he flapped and he clapped and beat his wings. Dust and sand flew, blew everywhere, but the stone house didn't move. He tried again, flapping even harder. Dust and sand got in his eyes, but the stone house didn't budge. Look, the Agamar man has gotten up to the nest. And look, he's helping the Dazzy and Mimby and Pimby escape. When the dust settled, the house was still standing, but the eagle was coughing and sneezing and his feathers were beat and broken and he was missing tail feathers. Knowing when to quit, he hopped his way to his nest. At least he had two dazzies waiting for dinner. But did he? See the dazzies? The eagle reached his nest, but the dazzies were gone. He looked down and saw them at the bottom of the mountain heading for the stone house. It was his last chance. He streaked down towards the open chimney. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. See the open chimney? Inside, the sisters hugged each other. There was nothing like a stone house when there are eagles about. Abundant, they cried. Just then, the eagle tumbled down the chimney. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll... A hot blast from the fire hit him. I'll fly home for a nap, he squeaked. 
as far as he could, as fast as he could, he squeezed back up the chimney and flew home, all black and singed in the smoky fire. Mimby, Pimby, and Timby never saw much of as a tail feather from the eagle again. See him black and singed? Mommy and Daddy and aunties and uncles and all their cousins and the Agamar man, too, had come to celebrate. Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, and to a place safe from eagles. See all of her aunties and uncles and moms and dads and the Agamar man. And if you travel to Nimbia someday, you will see the Dazzies living in stone houses with handsome Agamar men looking out for them. As for the pesky eagles, they're easily spotted for their feathers are black with soot. So, if you notice, that story is probably a little similar to our three little pigs, right? But it's a little different, and it is one of the folk tales that they have in N N Nibia, or Nibi, where how they talk about why animals live in certain houses. So, here we go. For our last story of the morning, let's, oh, I think I clicked on the wrong one. Yep. Let's do Are We There Yet? This one, I think, is about a car trip. I bet you girls have never said Are We There Yet? Are We There Yet? by Nina Laban and Adam McCauley. Are you ready? See, this, this is going to be like a graphic novel, girls. So we're going to have bubbles, text bubbles that tell us what's happening. So we have to follow along that way. Are you ready? His mom said. Where are we going? Said the little boy. To grandma's. Buckle up, the mom said. Are we there yet? He's not even to the end of his road yet. And he's asking, mom, no. Are we there yet? No. See all the traffic? They must be getting on the interstate. Are we there yet? Look at them traveling through the city. No, said Mom. Are we there yet? No. Look at them crossing the giant bridge. Are we there yet? No. Now they're in farm country. Are we there yet? No. They're out in the desert, aren't they? Are we there yet? They're passing the ocean. No, said Mom. Now, he, look, he, he's got them under the ocean. Are we there yet? No, said Mom. Are we there yet? Look, they're in outer space. No. Look, even in the alien ship. Are we there yet? No. 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 Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Almost. Are we there yet? Yes. 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 How was your trip? Said Grandma. Boring, said the little boy. I don't think that trip was so boring. Let's do it again. All right, girls, that brings us to the end of our story time this morning. I hope you girls enjoyed those three stories today.